like uh, everybody we need to get started is here. So welcome everyone. And um, I will go into talking about the program agenda pretty soon, but I, uh, Jim, would you uh, mind kicking us off today? Sure. So I want to say thank you to everyone in attendance and thank you to all our panelists and judges that are involved. And we are really excited to bring you the third year of the Big Pitch Ada. As you guys know, this is a community-wide actually a region-wide pitch event uh, centered in Ada, Oklahoma. Um, and just to give you an idea of why this is so important to us and where this is all coming from, um, Ada was really lucky to have a pitch event for high school and college students called Tiger Tank at East Central University. It made sense because you had the East Central University Tigers, hence Tiger Tank versus a Shark Tank. Um, a couple of years ago, we really began investing and expanding our entrepreneurship development efforts. Uh, we're an economic development organization, but we really think that a lot of Ada's economic development strength is going to come from um, new startup companies and entrepreneurs leading the way in creating new jobs. So we see this as a significant economic development initiative. Um, and we're so thrilled today to be able to offer our third year in the middle of what's been a very interesting and challenging year for a lot of us. But we think the virtual format will be excellent and we think that the, the lineup today will be um, very, very good as well. Um, yeah, I know we're gonna recognize all the sponsors here in a little bit, but I just wanna give a thank you to our sponsors that have made this happen, uh, particularly uh, Legal Shield. Um, who has been our headline sponsor again this year. Uh, they were our headline sponsor last year. And so much of this event, um, certainly we could find a way to raise you know, money and give it away, but we think that it's so cool that our local companies are investing in these entrepreneurs directly and using these dollars to support them. So thank you to our sponsors, thank you to our participants, and thank you to all of our judges that are here. Uh, with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Dia and let her um, kick it off. I am muted. Yes, thank you, Jim. And I'm going to share my screen so we can see the program agenda for today. All right. So we have six top finalists who were selected from a pool of strong applications, as Jim mentioned, from uh, region wide. And uh, we have two uh, categories uh, that we will be uh, seeing presentations from. There's the idea stage category where we have three participants pitching live and then we will have the revenue generating category. Uh, from these categories, we will have the top two winners who are competing for some awesome awards and uh, cash prizes that, that's brought to us by our sponsors. And our sponsors this year are uh, Legal Shield, First United Bank, Quantum Technology Center, REI Oklahoma, and Citizens Bank of Ada. So uh, going into the uh, pitch portion of it, Part participants have five minutes to make their pitch followed by 10 minutes of Q&A with our awesome panel of judges who I will introduce here in just a second. Um, since it is a pitch competition, we wanna to stick to the time. And for that, uh, we have on our uh, team, Jamie Green, who will be helping us keep time. Jamie, hi. So participants look out for Jamie at four minutes. She will give you a warning that we have one minute to go. And then at five minutes, uh, she will tell you that time's up. So uh, you want to kind of wrap up in the next 30 seconds and we will get uh, started with the Q&A portion of it. And uh, audience, I know that you guys will probably have uh, so many questions, right, from the presentations. And uh, even though we don't have an, a portion to answer questions during the presentations, but we ask you to put it in the chat and uh, we can engage uh, with the participants afterwards. But we will be uh, looking for your input during the live People's Choice Award voting. It will be a live poll where uh, you will be voting uh, for your favorite participant. And that will happen after the break, after the presentation. So hang in there. So with that, um, I am so excited to uh, uh, introduce our judging panel for this year. Uh, judges are so important. They not only help us select the top winners, but they will also provide guidance and feedback to our entrepreneurs. So we have with us today, uh, Kristen Garcia, who is the startup, uh, startup program specialist at Francis Tuttle Technology Center. Kristen, thank you so much for joining. Uh, Molly Pyle, who is the entrepreneurial ecosystem development lead 
with this on this, with the Center of Rural Innovation. Molly, thank you. And finally, Tyler Thompson, a real estate agent for 14 years with Mary Terry and Associates uh, here in Ada, Oklahoma, and also a East Central University uh, Business School alumni. So thank you, Tyler. And then we have our six finalists, the stars of the show today. And uh, without, if we do not have any more questions, I would like to introduce our first uh, speaker and presenter is Anthony Foreman with Punch and Trees Woodshop. So with that, Anthony, I will stop sharing my screen and um, please feel free to share yours and we will get started as soon as you give us the heads up. All right, can everyone see my screen? All right, can everyone hear and see my screen? Thumbs up? Yes. All right, All right. well, uh, I appreciate everyone being here today. Uh, I'm very honored to uh, have this opportunity to present to you. And uh, as Dia said, I am Anthony Foreman. I am with Punch and Trees Woodshop. We're in Arcadia, Oklahoma. And like everyone else, uh, life got a little crazy this year. And um, having small children in the home, um, things got a little bit, needed to get a little bit creative. And so in order to find uh, ways to stay busy and keep everyone active, uh, especially during lockdown, um, we started playing games. And uh, I have a three-year-old, uh, a four-year-old, and a 16-year-old. So a wide range of ages to keep busy, uh, including myself and my wife. And so one of the games that we, we played when the kids were little was peekaboo. And it's a very easy game. Everybody likes it. When they got a little older, we started playing hide and seek. And there is not a day that goes by that we don't play hide and seek. And it's a little hard for me to hide in a closet these days. I just, I can't fit in there and other places in the house. Um, you, you start running out of places to hide. And so what we did was we created the woodchuck. And the woodchuck is a, it is a dongle that allows us to play hide and seek and more than and more than the traditional way, which is just hiding in a closet or you know behind something or behind the couch. And so the idea was that with everything going on in the world, all of the mental health decline because of people being stuck in their house and feeling like they're out of the community or they're unable to um, to to play games and be with other people. Um, we decided to take this this thing, the woodchuck, and make it where you can play it in your house and out in the world. And we invite individuals to play this game with anyone in the world and track the information about the dongle. So I don't want to bore you with all this, the statistics and facts about uh, what happened with COVID-19 and the lockdowns, um, but there is some um, research that shows that because of the sedentary lifestyles that we've kind of introduced into our life, that our mental health is getting worse. And we want people to be more active and to get out and to, and to be able to play games and have fun and be social, but at a distance. And that's why we have, of course, created the woodchuck. So we want everyone to get outside, have fun and be social at a distance. And what the woodchuck is, is a pet rock meets hide and seek meets geocaching. And so the woodchuck, we've got a couple of different models here to show you today. I wanna to show you this one. Uh, this just kind of outlines that the woodchuck can be anything. It could be a circle, it can be an emoji, and it's made of wood. It's a mixture of wood and technology. It's tactile, it's digital, there's a global community. You can play it at home or in the wild. We have an app, a mobile website that goes with it. It can be fun shapes, we have different game modes, and it can be advertising and be imprinted for businesses. So uh, we use a unique quick response code or a QR code and near field communication tag embedded with, uh, within the device, within the dongle, the woodchuck. And what it does is it links you to a cloud-based application that handles the tracking of the last found location of the dongle, uh, the owner, what, the, what your score is, the number of times it's been found, how long it took you to find it. Uh, there's a plethora of data available about each and every one of these woodchucks, including when it was manufactured and who did the finishing of the product. Um, we, the interaction is done through a mobile app and a website. So the woodchuck works 
uh, on multiple platforms, uh, Google, Android, including older devices. So it's not limited by any specific technology. Uh, the way that the dongle works is the same as your podcast works. It only yeah. interacts whenever um, a, a device comes in contact with it. So here's a, a quick outline. Of, we use the QR code, the NFC. Uh, there's also a magnet embedded on the back of the device so that it can be stuck to all kinds of different things. So you get all kinds of creative and clever ways to interact with uh, your environment. So the, there are more than 3 million active geocaches worldwide and um, over 642 million founded and event attended logs have been uh, logged about uh, geocaches. Uh, the toy market in 2019 was $22 billion. Four billion of that was outdoor and sport toys, which is where we believe we fit. Uh, the potential then for this device is about $200 million. That's about 5% of the total uh, accessible market. And we believe that this is a new frontier in a symbiotic tactile and digital entertainment. So we're going to start out by selling on Etsy and Amazon. We've already got a, an account on Amazon. Anthony. And um, anyway, I open up now for questions. Thank you. My first question, Anthony, is how much do they cost? So the ideal cost of uh, the retail cost of this is going to be about um, $20 each. Um, the cost of manufacturing right now with our current abilities is about $6.47 per unit. Do you already have an app set up for this? We've got a, a mobile a website uh, um, that, that reads the QR codes at this time. We're working on um, implementing the NFC tags at this time. So the, the app isn't totally completed, but the mobile website does work. Okay. Thank you. Hey, Anthony, um, it's Kristen. I'm curious to know um, who have you uh, researched you could maybe initially jump into this market with to get started on, on selling the, the dongles? So uh, right now, um, the, the original geocache founding company, which is called Groundspeak, um, they have a marketplace that's similar. Um, it's not the exact same type of product because our idea is that it's, it's, you can play it at home or in the wild. Um, we're really going to try to sell this through like Amazon and Etsy. We've already got a handmade account through, um, at, uh, Amazon to sell. Um, the, what differentiates us between what Groundspeak is doing and what we're doing is that we're allowing for the product to be marketed. Meaning that let's say Dell wants to sell this or give this product out to all of its employees. We can slap their logo on it and it's specific to just their employees. McDonald's can have a logo on it and sell it to their, or, and, and you know, provide information about their restaurants whenever you, you scan the code. Um, whereas Groundspeak and geocaching.com does not allow any kind of marketing or advertising. Um, I believe that this game needs to be in everybody's hands. And if Dell or uh, you know, the Ada Jobs Foundation or if EOC want to put their logo or ECU want to put their logo on these things, that should be available as well as marketing with uh, like, you know, universities and things like that. Molly, your uh, audio is not coming through. My audio dear? Yes, now, now we can hear you. Oh, okay, sorry, that was weird. I got the spinning pinwheel of death for a second. <laughs> um, <laughs> Anthony, I was just wondering how many, you know, let's say I'm one of your target customers, I'm a family, how many of these would I buy? Like, what is the, what is the cap for me? And have you thought at all about the environmental impact of these maybe just being left out in nature or what might that look like? Absolutely. So <clears throat> the idea is that with a major market saturation of this device, that there will be dozens of them out there for you to find. Because it's not just about hiding it, which is part of the fun. The other fun is finding other devices that have been left in the wild. Um, as far as the environmental aspect, um, we're a wood shop. And so we're manufacturing these out of wood. And the idea right now is that we're going to manufacture these primarily out of cedar, uh, which is considered to be the weed of the wood world. And so um, 
basically by manufacturing out of cedar, we're getting rid of an abundance of cedar in the world. But also over time, if these are left in the wild, they're just going to bio, biodegrade and decompose. Um, there's a very minimal amount of materials that are going to be Im embedded in this because there's no electronics. Um, so what is going to be there is going to be paper and a little bit of metal and then all of the 90% of it's wood. So it, it eventually is just going to, you know, disappear. And that's really the idea is, is that, you know, you, you don't feel bad for leaving it out in the wilderness because, you know, it's going to get reabsorbed back into the world. But yeah, the, yeah, you can have as many of them as you'd like for your family. Um, you know, the idea would be maybe you can get a two pack, three pack. Um, so that you can play one inside, one or two in your house and then also outside. And I, we play this with our kids in the house all the time. Um, we're always hiding it, putting it in the closets, underneath tables, whatever. And it's always, hey, did you find the poop today? Because we have one of the poop emoji ones is what we play with. Um, so it's, it's always just a lot of fun. My mom hit it one time. We couldn't find it for two weeks. I mean, it's just, it's just a fun game. How do they, do they special order? I think that's my question. I mean, do they have to be OU'd? Can I have a T-Rex? Like what's the, I mean, how are they, are they, are they different? Are they big? Are they small? Kind of, so how are they ordering it? I guess is the my. The form factor is it's three inches by three inches. So okay. it's relatively small, but it's still, you know, still big enough. You're going to, you're going to see it in your hand. Um, it does not have to be OU. It does not have to be a circle. It does not have to be a square. Um, right now, the, the plan, we've, we've primarily been giving these out. We've been, we've been testing these in the market with people. Um, these are really popular because it's kind of funny. Um, but it can be any emoji shape. It can be any color. It can be, um, you know, any special order. Um, but primarily, we're going to do, you know, for the general market, for like Amazon, it's going to be things like emoji shapes. Um, but if you're, if you're a business or if you're a university, you might want to have your logo put on it. Um, if I, if, um, you know, if you're selling computers, you might want it to be a computer shape, you know, whatever it's anything is, is possible. Okay. So your target is just to, for them to like, a, like Dell to order a computer from you, but you're not, your goal is not to advertise on every single one of them that goes out. Right. So the idea is that, um, there are just general play ones and then a business could also utilize it for advertising and marketing like okay. at a trade show right. so you might want to shove one of these in a trade show bag with your mm -hmm. logo on it and okay. then when people scan the qr code on the back the portal that you're going to go to is our website but it might have your advertisement on there that was like you know this is dell or whatever okay thank you mm -hmm. anthony i know you had to rush through the last few slides um I don't know if it's possible for you to share your revenue model. I think you just had to go over that real quick. Um, see that again. So, so basically the idea is going to be that we're going to sell the product for roughly $20 each. Um, and then a, additional marketing and revenue will come from advertising inside the app. So the long-term um, revenue will be from advertising. Uh, when people find it and they, they scan it, they look at the app, the, then they get the targeted advertising. Um, and that will also cover the cost of the servers and the website that has to, of course, stay up. Um, so that's, that's kind of the revenue, the model. It's the, the initial sell of the product as well as um, advertising within the app and the website. And then with that, have you uh, considered when you would be able to break even? Um, so it's... it's um, I honestly haven't haven't uh, figured those numbers out. It's it's going to be a, a hopefully within a short period of time. We're we're hoping to have this in the market by uh, December, um, and we believe that you know once we hit the market that within a short period of time, we're hoping that by early uh, 2021 that we can um, reduce our expenses of manufacturing, then of course increasing our profits um, because when we're manufacturing a larger number. Uh, we of course can cut our expenses. So ideally by early to mid um, 2021, we can cut even and then start producing additional shapes, colors, um, those sorts of things. Are you in the woodworking world now? Yes. Okay. That was part of, part of the, my COVID transition was getting into woodworking. It was, I needed an additional hobby to fill some of my time. And I got, I've always done woodworking, but this was kind of new. Um, we added a CNC machine to our wood shop, uh, which allows us, of course, to manufacture these devices very quickly. Um, 
I don't know if I got to the slide or not, but we can manufacture 326 units every five days. Um, so it's a five day um, manufacturing cycle. Um, so of course, in the course of a month, we can basically pump out a little over 2000 something units. Um, and we're, we're ready to go. We, we've, been, we've been playing with these devices for some time. Um, we just need the, the financial push to, uh, to get it into the stores. We need to get the packaging in place and uh, all the printing and those sorts of things. But um, like I said, we're already on Amazon. We're already on Etsy. We're ready to go. And my question right now for you to with the woodworking side of things, and you know how this goes, with right now lumber is so expensive. Is that why the unit is $20 each or is that just because that's the markup that you want? So basically at $6.47 per, per unit to manufacture, that's including everything. That's, that's hourly wages for the, the worker, that's uh, the machine time, um, you know, and of course that's, that's averaged over the course of the 326 units we're gonna manufacture. Um, the cost of lumber right now is very high, uh, but we do have uh, access to more affordable um, options. And because they're so small, they really don't, I mean, we can manufacture quite a, quite a n number of them um, within our, our, our resources. So, and I, I think also once we get into actually manufacturing these out of cedar, um, and, and there's a cedar mill just down the street. So we're actually gonna be able to get um, cedar relatively cheaply and um, pretty much on demand. Judges, we are at 10 minutes, but we can have one more a quick question if there's any. I just am curious about the structure of your team, Anthony. Do you have any other co-founders or what does the team look like? So primarily right now, this was, uh, it's, it's just a family organization. Um, I do have uh, individuals that are going to assist in the app development and uh, the future part of that. Um, I'm in IT. I've been in IT for over 15 years. Um, and that, that includes web development, uh, app development. Uh, I've done a video game that's actually in the Google Play Store. Um, and I've managed a team uh, of IT professionals. So I've, I've got that background uh, as far as the technology side. Um, really and truly, it's going to be, um, I think, a family situation at first. And then once we kind of expand and get bigger, then it's going to uh, grow into an actual we're going to hire individuals to help do the finishing process and those sorts of things. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Anthony. And thank you, uh, judges. Um, I will give you a couple minutes to maybe take some notes. Uh, our next con our next participant is uh, Fredisha. So Fredisha, if you want to start getting set up and share your screen. Thank you. While she does that, I will quickly introduce Radisha. Radisha Neely is the founder of We Care & Co. Uh, it, it provides care packages for students that are currently in quarantine due to uh, COVID-19. Their care packages include items that cater to the physical, mental, and emotional well-being of students. So judges, can you just kind of give me a, a heads up when you're ready for the next, uh, next presentation? Kristen, Molly. Okay, awesome. Fredisha, whenever, uh, give me once. Can everyone have me okay? Uh, what, let me try to make you, uh, get you in the spot. Just a second. All right, okay, whenever you're ready. Okay, can you hear me well? Okay, awesome. I'm gonna start. The highlight of my day is making sure that you're okay. In a time where love and support is needed the most, we find ourselves having to isolate away from our loved ones. In the last few months, there has been over 10 million cases of coronavirus here in the US. That number only accounts for a fraction of the persons that are actually having to quarantine away from their loved ones. As social and relational beings, humans have a special need to interact and connect with others. And this is why We Care & Co. is here to fill that gap by providing personalized handcrafted care packages that are structured to promote both the physical and mental health needs of our students. Our first package, Feeling Good, caters to the physical ailments that students may experience whilst they are sick. And our second package, Hobby Haven, caters to the 
our second package, Harvey Haven. All right, our, our second package, Harvey Haven, focuses on decreasing both loneliness and inactivity that is experienced during quarantine whilst also providing a support system for students. We plan to expand to represent both, both diverse student groups and events, such as the intellectual, the athlete, the working student, and events such as finals week. On our mission to pay kindness forward, let's end 2020 on a good note with a package from We Care. My name is Pradesh Neely, the CEO and founder of We Care & Co. I'll now give you a detailed outlook of my business. We are going to operate as an online retailer. We intend to use campus bookstores or either campus stores to use their online platform so that our product is displayed in the store and online. We also intend to use the marketing strategies that they already have in place to market to specific student groups. Low cost strategy. We, we're gonna operate at a low cost strategy. What we want to do is provide a product that is in good quality, but is also affordable to college students and persons that may just be going through hard times and customer relations. Customer relations is the heart of our business. We want to build relationships that are long lasting that that we will be here for persons throughout their journey when, whenever they were having hard times and also get students throughout their college journey. The care package industry is a $25 billion market worldwide. And it is a growing one that is expecting to reach to $34 billion in the year 2020. Specific to Oklahoma, COVID-19 has been detrimental. It has increased and still is increasing and has been over 100,000 cases within the state. From a study from the American Psychology Association, I found out that mental health as a result of the year 2020 has increased in anxiety, depression, and relationship issues among college students. Our target market is gonna be students, loved ones, and quarantine individuals. We want to give students the accessibility to have this product available to them when they need it. We want to get their loved ones involved so that they can cater our product to provide the support that individuals will need. And after expansion, we want to market to all quarantine individuals in a stress in a way that we can offer some sort of stress relief. Competitors. So here in Ada, where we would be starting off initially, we do have Amazon, Walmart, and Walgreens that can deliver to students, but it will be inconvenienced in the sense that the grouping of the materials that will be together is not available. They also will not cater to mental health. Then we have OCM for on-campus mar marketing. They also provide care packages that, provide, that have snacks in them, but they do not cater to anything for quarantine individuals. We plan to expand over a year in three phases. Our first phase is going to be our product launch. Our second phase is gonna be product expansion. And our third phase, we wanna to expand to the market. So the first phase, we're just gonna be launching the product, getting it out there. The second, pa the second phase, we're gonna introduce no new products. And our third, page, we want, our third phase, we want to go beyond college students and represent all quarantine individuals. This is a little more about myself. I'm a senior business management major, and I am passionate about helping persons using entrepreneurship as a tool. During this process, I have had great insight and some ideas from advisors like Ms. Stacy Bolin and Ms. Christine King, my manager. And I will end here. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Thank you for listening. I'll take any questions at this time. My first question is, so the, the first one is four months, correct? Yes. Okay. I, I think you need to expand it of quarantine, hopefully, isn't going to last forever. So yeah. I, I think you have an actual business that you can not only focus on quarantine, but you actually need to think bigger than just past when the, you know, the students, the people were in our homes, like actually take so much the quarantine out, but other than you're making people feel good. Right. 
Yeah. And so what is, so who are you, I mean, other than how are they ordering it? I guess that's my first question. So my first thing is, well, what I'm actually in the process of doing, I'm going to have it on ECU's website on the bookstores page. <sighs> is our campus store. So it's gonna be available on there for students. And I, I hope to get in collaboration with both um, the counseling and the health service center so that they know that this product is available for persons that do need it because they have an account of persons that are having mental health issues along with the persons who are sick with COVID. Okay. Molly, your audio is not working. <laughs> to let you know while you were asking. I'll, I'll ask a question while we wait. Um, so in regards to kind of thinking of like the next steps of your market, um, do, have you considered bringing on uh, a team member that has a better understanding of like mental health? Because it seems like you're finding some great numbers in regards to that. And I think going on to to Tyler's question, there's there's something that has been missing in college student life that's causing that to happen. Um, do you have any any possibility of adding people with that expertise and background? Yeah, so I do have a few friends that are even at different colleges that are psychology majors. They can help me on the support aspect and the communication aspect aspect that they get with this package. So with each package, I am willing to have this available to them. You can email us, DM us on Facebook, let us know how you're doing, give us some feedback and we will help you through that. Now to um, expand beyond this, I do want to introduce like just a general stress relief package because in life, in school, this is gonna happen. So I think that's gonna be a continuous market. So with that, I do have persons that I can get insight from. And like I said, I wanted to work with the counselor at ECU she has great numbers and she knows what's going on on campus because mental health anxiety happens at any time depression happens at any time it's just hiding because of COVID but it's still going to continue throughout college or life let me see now can anyone hear me yes, yes. okay very sorry I'm not sure what's happening but first of all I, I um, credit you for taking on such an important problem of mental health you're absolutely right it's a it's a long-term issue that millions of people, billions are on the world face. I am wondering if you view the target customer as students, and if you could say more about why students would be buying this for themselves or for other students, rather than perhaps their parents, or who, like, just a little more thinking around that target customer and why students are seen as a customer when they're also <laughs> a user, right? Right. Okay, so... My, um, students are just my initial customers. That's the market that I want to target first before expansion. Mm -hmm. So why I wanted to grab is I noticed that on campus, students are having to quarantine like an isolated dorm. That means not even in the comfort of their own dorm. They're put on the other side of campus somewhere and their parents are like panicking. Mm -hmm. So this is something that they can just go online and order from the bookstore's website or their parents can just have it ordered and get to them, mm -hmm. it'd be a great deal. Another reason is because you can't prepare to be quarantined and you can't come, you can't really prepare or do prepare to have COVID, you're gonna need medicine, you're gonna need masks, you're gonna need hand sanitizers, health supplies, you're gonna need something to do. So that's why they're gonna purchase this product. There's um, loved ones are gonna purchase the product because they want to support their person that is in quarantine. And then later on, quarantine individuals would want to buy this product so that they are prepared basically whilst they're in quarantine. Absolutely. I mean, it sounds like you want the college student to purchase this in one way that was sort of the first segment versus their mm -hmm. parents when it seems like it may be more likely that the parents are buying this. That's That was just what I was kind of digging yeah. into. Yeah, I would follow up on Molly. Um, having been someone who's been in COVID quarantine the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been easier and, you know, I'm a, I'm a grown adult, but still my parents are going on Amazon and they're just sending me the medicine and stuff that I need. Um, and so one of the notes I was kind of taking is, you know, working with like the parent association, 
Um, you know, I, I think it's easy convenience uh, to go onto Amazon and just quickly order what you need. So I think the marketing element is going to be a big part of what, what you'll need to focus on so that the loved ones see that, hey, they're sick and it's, you know, where should I go other than Amazon or, you know, Walmart pickup or whatever it might be um, so that they can, they can know that it's a great service because I've seen so many great care packages out there, regardless of COVID or not, just self-care, but it's like you have to go through the weeds to find them. So a question might be to the students in the market is to ask them, how would you know what to look for? Because it's easier to Google COVID stuff, find the CDC website, and then probably go to like Walgreens or something. Uh, and so you want to be that, that, that uh, we care package that people think of first. Absolutely. Have you talked to any of the hospitals or are you only focused on the college students? Yeah, I have not expanded to hospitals yet. It's just been local college, well, ECU basically so far. Okay. How are you delivering these packages to them? Well, these packages, they, well, they can have another person either come in to the bookstore to pick it up, or I can get it. If they are on campus, I can get it to their dorms. No contact, just place on their doorstep and we'll notify them when it is there. So this is targeted for East Central University students right now? Initially, Only. yes. Okay, okay. Is your vision eventually to uh, expand to multiple universities where this is an offering, um, you know, throughout you know the state or the country that different universities could sign on and offer something like this in their bookstore? Yes, definitely. So I do want to start in the state of Oklahoma, starting off with colleges with similar demographics, size, and numbers, and then we can expand on to the bigger colleges as our company grows, basically. Um, this is something that I do want in the colleges across Oklahoma on their, their campus websites as a resource to their both cou um, counseling, health, whatever they need. I just want it to be available to them. I, I will leave you with this. I, all I want you to do is simply think like Molly said, their parents, their parents have more money than they do. They're going to send stuff to them if you're going to focus on college mm -hmm. students. But also as a man, if I'm trying to send something, not only, you know, tea, outdoors, whatever you want to do, mm -hmm. focus on the flower shops, a boutique, the hospitals, because that is a lazy man's dream is to not pick anything out and spend $30 and send it. So I, yes. think, you have a, I think you have a good idea. I think you just need to look past quarantine. Definitely. I, I am looking into that. Okay. Absolutely. I think your angle on, you know, mental health is really key and that a lot of universities for the long term would be interested in making sure their, their students have, you know, avenues to receive support or care, love from their family and, mm -hmm. and just get that boost. So definitely think expanding beyond and, you know, once <laughs> We hope COVID is over eventually. <laughs> yeah. um, this can still be a relevant product. You have a couple different ways that this is, you know, showing up in people's lives and in the shops. I also like your local angle. So mm -hmm. another reason for me to not buy things just randomly on Amazon or Walmart is if you have things that are very specific to Oklahoma or made in Ada or you know, referencing ECU. So even some partnerships where you're using the logo and you get a stuff yeah. that has the logo and things like that where it feels more thoughtful and curated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I definitely, even with expansion, I do, ex well, like you said, using a logo, I do want it to be on that college's web page so that they'll know like, this is a part of us. This is what we're using. This is what we prefer to use to get them to use this product. Mm -hmm. Judges and Fredisha, we are at time. We can have uh, one more question or comment if you guys have any. Okay, R very well done, good job. Hey, thank you all so much. Thanks. Okay, we will give the judges a couple minutes to take some notes and our next participant is Naresh Janeja. Naresh, I'm going to add you to the spotlight and allow you to share your screen. And just give us a give us a second before you get started.
Judges, are we uh, ready ready to uh, kick off this one? Okay, awesome. Naresh, whenever you're ready. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Naresh Chuneja, and I'm thankful for everybody who's here uh, to see this uh, kickoff of the pitch competition. Um, we choose to go to the moon because that is important. And that is a part of the speech which was given by JFK in 1960. And in that speech, he highlighted some challenges we choose not to ignore. Breathify USA is a product which was designed, built, and will go into manufacturing in ADA. This is part of an initiative to build manufacturing capability back in rural America. Now, why air purifiers? Um, if you go to uh, the city, uh, Oklahoma City, you will see there is a there are two huge billboards which are advertising that Grand Casino Shawnee changes its air every 8.5 minutes. Um, that is the importance of clean air at, at this time. And who knew that we would be moving towards uh, giving out bottled uh, air uh, in, in the situation we, we are in uh, today. The problem also has been uh, um, talked by about by who, who feel that uh, air pollution is an existential threat uh, to through uh, pollution and through contaminants uh, in the world. And 7 million deaths are attributed to air pollution every year. Uh, if you dig a little deeper into the problem, we'll see that in the US, one home in every four home has an air purifier, which needs an air purifier because they have a person who gets affected by other pollen or by other contaminants in the air. So that is the situation now in this market. Uh, nothing is available, which is which people can use uh, effectively as because first, they are very expensive and most people get priced out of uh, buying those air purifiers. Secondly, most of the focus is on technology and that uh, sort of does not suit well with people because they're talking about technology less about um, the air purification. And then there is this issue of smell and the heat and the maintenance. Breathify, at Breathify, the first thing we worked on was the functionality and uh, that is where we started. So what we have worked on is uh, providing a unit which is simple in design. There's no frills, it just delivers air, that's it. The second thing we worked on was making it user-friendly. That means it's a plug and play system. You just have to put in the plug and uh, you are done. The third we worked on was keeping the effectiveness of the unit at the level of the highest purification what was available in the market. So what we put by making it simple and reliable, we did not sacrifice the effectiveness of the unit and the way it cleans the air. That was the goal and that is what we've achieved through this product. The product is designed using something called a reverse air technology, which is a patent pending technology. Uh, it basically what it does is it uh, in its clean cycle, the last thing which comes out is pure air. Uh, basically, this can clean a 350 square feet room in about in less than an hour at a 99.9% efficiency. Basically, it means that you will absolutely clean room in less than an hour. The other part we worked on was uh, using eco-friendly uh, products uh, or materials to make this product. Uh, this product is already launched in India where it is made uh, by using fiberboard. So we redesigned the product using recycled you plastics. You have one minute, Naresh. And uh, that is where uh, we brought in the, uh, the advantages. Uh, if you compare this to other units available in the market, you will see that uh, we are uh, priced at about $150. Uh, our maintenance is $12 for air filters to change every six months. And we are the only portable, fully portable unit in the market. At this stage, we are about to launch our Kickstarter campaign, which uh, is the phase two. The phase one was the design and uh, the prototyping. Uh, we hope uh, to launch that 100 units per month uh, by December and January of next year. 
all this has been possible or all the speed we have achieved uh, has been possible through the participation of partners we have and partnerships we have built uh, around this uh, process, uh, which includes PTC, which includes uh, ECU and uh, the Ada Jobs Foundations. Foundation who has helped us to uh, sort of speed this product to the market. Uh, what is the ask at this time? We are looking at an investment of 20,000. Time is uh, it? To use uh, to buy the 3D printers and uh, material which we need need to build this uh, these units. Uh, that will help us uh, move into putting together 100 units a month. And that is also what we require to break even uh, at this stage. Uh, Thank you, Harish. We have set up a community project and we look forward to taking any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Narish, thank you for your presentation. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about um, the process you kind of personally went through to determine that this filter uh, uh, or your product was something different um, and, and what really got you to this point? The product has, was designed by a designer in India. Uh, he's a 19 year old kid who's been joining uh, uh, Stanford next year. He was honored by the Department of Commerce here in the US for his uh, technology, for his development and his innovative technology. What you see here are the purifiers which were built locally here in Ada. So you can see that we already have a working unit here uh, uh, for, the, for this product. Uh, the filters, everything was designed there. What I did in the US was to redesign the product, making it in India, it's about 18 pounds. And what we have done is we have reduced the weight, weight to six pounds here. And uh, we have made it uh, much more uh, uh, robust in its design. And uh, there are no glues in this unit. So the filtration unit is the same, what is being used in India. We have already sold about 800 units in India. So the filtration unit is the, exactly the same. Uh, but what we have achieved is uh, through a uh, great design. We do not use any glues. We do not have any other issues in terms of USC. So uh, the product is more tuned to the US markets. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Is the actual inventor, is he, on, is he a part of your team or, did, or did, mm -hmm. did we take this from somebody? Kind of what? The actual inventor is uh, Krish. He's part of the development team here also. Okay. He's in India, but he helped me with, he's going to help me with the setup of the design of the website, the social media marketing is all that he takes care of that because he's smarter on that. I'm more of a tech guy. Uh, I'm more of a technology person, right? And uh, the design here is what I worked on and uh, tried to make it uh, more feasible for the US market, reducing the weight, uh, removing the glues. Uh, the Indian design has 18 parts. We have a total of five. So that is how, that is where my contribution came in to make it a product which was uh, um, easily put together. And uh, um, what we also try to provide is that on this product is, if you break this product in a year, you can just send it back to us, we'll send you a new one. Because the way we have designed it for us to change a part is absolutely a no brain. Do you have a patent on this product? Uh, we have a patent on the, air filtration system, yes. Mm -hmm. I was gonna be, my question is if this is an innovation on the current technology, because you, I'm sure you are aware this is a very crowded space and has been for a while because of COVID, but even prior to that with fires on the West Coast. So you have a patent and what is your, I guess then go to market strategy for how you're going to really, you know, commercialize this? See, we feel at this time that we have a product which is different from what is available in the market. See, most of the products available in the market, if you look at Molecule, if you look at Dyson, they are more technology oriented products and their filters, the Dyson filter is $80. The, uh, the Molecule filter is also about $40. And these are products which focus more on, um, their shapes are round or some absurd shapes, right? And they have, uh, they have, these are materials, these are products which they have too much hype attached with it with regards to 
integration with Alexa and other things, right? We have done not, none of those things. What we have come out with is a simple, straightforward product. The, the Dyson product is 500, the molecule is $800. Mm -hmm. So if you want a house which is clean at uh, PM 2.5, which is basically means that a 2.5 micron particle is cleaned from your house, which is still does not cover COVID. Okay, so let me clear that out, right? But it covers almost 99.97 percentages percentage of all contaminants in your house. This product is priced at $150. The filter is $12. You need to change your filter every six months. So over the life of the product, you would hardly spend anything on this uh, on owning this product. The second thing, at the end of life, you can send it back to us. You're going to recycle the whole product from the motors to the the body of the product, everything gets recycled. So there is zero wastage on this product. So we feel these are some very strong points. The idea is we want to go into social media marketing. And that is the reason I'm getting a intern from ECU. We're going to call him CEO, intern CEO. So the idea is he runs the program. We are there to support him. I got a lot of support from PTC, from Ada Jobs Foundation, from a lot of people in the community, right? And this is my way of giving it back that I train a guy to become a CEO. So he graduates from ECU and he'll run a company. So it's my job to give him the product and provide him the support. Yeah, I, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, a company. it's direct to consumer then? You're thinking you'd want to make a big splash and then just send these directly to people who place orders? Yes. So the idea in India also we are doing is we are doing it through Instagram in India and Facebook. Here we plan to focus to go through Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook. Uh, we want to focus on that. So the intern uh, and uh, Professor Pauls is going to sort of, is, she's working on getting me somebody. The idea would be to uh, go through social media marketing and make it available across the country. Uh, we know California is a good market, Colorado is a good market, but the idea is not to get restricted by fires or to use uh, COVID as a, as a starting point. The idea is that it is a product which people need, right? And to make their life a um, little better, right? And then we don't, we want to make it in a way that you can use it at your business, you can use it at your home, you can use it wherever you want. Have you approached the Walmarts, Home Depot, any of those? I mean, I, I love the social media aspect of it with the younger person, but if I get on Instagram, it's not to search for an air purifier. That's the only thing that the problem I see with the social network side of it. But I could see it in Walmart. I could see it. You could get a QVC hour you know, and kind of go from there. I just don't know if you've approached any of those people yet. We are still very early in the product, right? So give you a little background. The whole project started in June. So okay. not even six months. And six months back, I knew nothing about 3D printing. <laughs> Today, I'm probably one of the top people in Ada, at least, who knows 3D printing better than a lot of people, right? Mm. I can teach additive marketing to people at this time. And my background is uh, engineering and uh, I have a graduate school degree in industrial engineering and management. I so that. at that stage, I can sort of, I want to use 3D printing and expand this into Ada in a way that uh, other people who want to develop products can use this expertise. So that is where I'm going with this product, right? This is the first step for me, right? I right. would like to expand this all across um, rural America in a way that anybody who wants to set up a manufacturing can leverage what we are trying to do and, ex and establish it with full knowledge, which includes setup uh, and things which we are, I'm going to document in terms of marketing, in terms of problems we have faced uh, in developing the product. And then how many jobs do you think this will create in ADA? See, this is a, these are smaller plants. Uh, let me give you an idea, right? We are not setting up a huge plant. The idea of using 3D printing is that through a more compact unit, we are able to set up, manufacture larger numbers. So I'm expecting at least to start with five or six people. But if you go to the 500 unit per week, per month target, then yes, we'll be looking at much more, uh, much more number of people working till about 30, 20 to 30 people working at 500 units. Yeah, that's great. Judges, we have one more minute. So maybe just one or two more questions. Uh, I had a question. You, so you mentioned that it's portable. 
Uh, is this uh, something that you plug in? Is it uh, battery charged? Can you tell me more about that? Simple plug and a simple switch. That's it. <laughs> That's what we have. It's total like, I can play around with it. You can see that. <laughs> six pounds. At this time, it is actually less than six pounds. So my, my recommendation, and I'm going to put this in the notes, is to look into a phase two of something that you can charge um, in, and use without power in the event that someone needs it and they don't have electricity or power in their house. That is um, yes, I can. We can do that. Or, you know, you, you brought up the casino. I, I think, wouldn't it be awesome to take that to the casino and <laughs> just sitting right next to you? <laughs> we, have, we have a range of products. So we have a one which is for the cars. We have not launched it as yet, but we have the design ready. And we have one more uh, for smaller homes. So this one is a 350 square foot unit. We have a 220 square foot unit. And then we have a larger unit, which is uh, going to be a thousand square feet. So we have all the range, we have the full range. And, uh, but the idea is you wanted to start with one product and make it successful. The idea is not to sort of uh, uh, come out with 10 products at the same time, right? We want to do one, we do want to do it well. And we want to prove that we are what we are, we, we deliver what we are talking about. We want to talk, uh, walk that talk and not just sort of tell people that we have a product and then not be able to support it. Okay, we are at time. Um, great discussion. Thank you, Naresh, for your presentation. Thank you, judges. Um, so that is the end of the idea stage category, and we will be moving on to the revenue stage. So judges, I'll give you a few uh, minutes to kind of get your scoring and notes. And our next speaker is Cody Tucker. And Cody, let me get you on the spotlight. One second here. All right, there we go. So Cody Tucker is the founder of Convey 640. Convey 640 helps clients search and analyze Oklahoma oil and gas data quickly and easily. Um, judges, can I get a thumbs up if you're ready to go? Okay, awesome. Cody, whenever you're ready to share your screen. Can you see my screen and hear me? Yeah, you can't hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, Cody Tucker with Convey 640. Uh, we're an oil and gas uh, data and analytics platform. And uh, we focus on Oklahoma oil and gas activity. So we help our clients uh, answer who, what, when, and where. Uh, this business kind of started with a newsletter. I didn't really envision myself becoming a, a, a software company. I uh, had an oil and gas consulting business, uh, started that in 2015, and that market's pretty saturated. And so I was trying to stand out from the competition and doing a lot of content marketing about what was going on in the space. And so I was sending out newsletter, blogs, uh, LinkedIn posts, et cetera, and I was manually gathering that information. And so for like the newsletter, I was spending you know four to eight hours uh, just to put that together. So just taking a lot of time and I knew parts of it could be automated. So I hired a contract developer uh, to help speed up some of that process. And during that time, just kind of saw the value, was getting a lot of positive feedback, uh, talked to him more about what we could do and kind of just expanded um, to where we are today. Um, so self-funded, uh, did it you know, via the landman consulting work, kind of paying for it. Uh, and then luckily the contract developer that I hired uh, he kind of, he put a ton of sweat equity into it, saw the value, uh, knew where it could go. Um, and we worked out a deal to now where we're uh, equal 50-50 partners in that. So very blessed uh, to have that opportunity. Um, so we use advanced computer technology uh, to gather, clean, and process the data. Uh, I'm not the developer, so I won't get into the, the details, but this is kind of the technology that we use. So we cover a wide range. And basically look at three types of oil and gas data that's uh, categorizes land regulatory and well data uh, the land data kind of picture if you go to the courthouse uh, and instruments that are filed there so leases deeds assignments and then we look at regulatory 
information which comes from the Corporation Commission, uh, and it's basically legal filings, so PDFs, uh, and they're related to well proposals. So before you drill a well, uh, there's some legal proceedings that you uh, have to go through, and uh, those are filed online uh, via PDFs. And then we look at well information. So who's permitting wells, who's drilling the wells, uh, who's buying and selling wells, and then what are the production amounts uh, of those wells. And so we take all that information. So it could be uh, information that's in the cloud via an API, uh, an Excel spreadsheet, a PDF, it might be uh, multiple websites. Uh, we combine all of that information and we put it into uh, our platform. So work, like I said, that used to take hours, if not days to complete, uh, you can now do in minutes uh, via our, our platform. And so our revenue, we're a software as a service model, um, and these are our plans. Uh, so different tiered pricing, depending on how much data and kind of what uh, modules you want to access. Uh, but these, we, you know, we're flexible. Uh, we have a yearly or monthly plans and we're transparent. And that might seem uh, you know, like, yeah, Doug, you should be transparent with your pricing. You know, if I want to go buy Netflix, I know how much it's going to cost. But uh, in the industry, since we're business to business, uh, that hasn't been the case in the past. Um, so this is kind of something new where you throw your prices up there. Anybody can see it, even your competitors. Um, so that's something that uh, differentiates us from some of the other competitors. And then our clients. Uh, so we have exploration and production clients. So those are who, uh, you know, are drilling the wells. So think of like, you know, Chesapeake's, Devon's, uh, you know, the big companies like that. Uh, we have oil field service, mineral and non-operators, uh, acquisition and divestiture, and individual mineral owners. Uh, so we cover a, a wide range of clients. Um, the most that we have uh, is our mineral and non-operators. Uh, that's kind of like our uh, our sweet spot because kind of the modules that we have kind of catered to them. And then since my background, I was on the mineral side, um, I just kind of had uh, great relationships already built up. And then for marketing, uh, we have the newsletter, like I mentioned, uh, we do LinkedIn. Uh, we don't do Facebook or Instagram or Twitter just because our clientele is not really on uh, those mediums. And then we do product demos and then word of mouth. And then so for future goals, uh, it to expand our data, and that's what we'd use kind of the prize money uh, for. Some of the data that we access does cost. Um, and then to get a larger market share, eventually be kind of the go-to source for Oklahoma data. Uh, we have a few competitors, um, you know, but we're, we're slowly gaining on them, especially kind of with our transparent pricing uh, and the market kind of shifting. Your time's um, up. And so we want to be the go-to source. And then also just be flexible. Uh, the market's changing, technology's changing, uh, and we just want to learn to adapt. So I was going to show you a demo, um, but it, I'll just quickly show you the product exists here. If you want to see it, it's land, regulatory, and well information. You can just kind of see a bunch of information and uh, that we gather, and then you can analyze that quickly. So I won't bore you with the details, but the product exists. Um, and so any questions? Hey, Cody, do you, do you, is it for all the counties in Oklahoma or do they have to purchase per county? Yeah, so we have all of the counties for our regulatory and our well data. Uh, the land data, we have 31 of the 77 counties, just kind of, but not every county in Oklahoma is active or has oil and gas. Um, there's, you know, just kind of a certain areas we focused on those. Um, but we do plan to get all of the counties, and that's what I kind of referenced is getting all of that information uh, from the counties. A lot of them are tied into OK County records, uh, and that accessing that information costs. And so when we were launching, since we were self-funded, we didn't want to gather uh, information from counties that didn't have any oil and gas activity or that people weren't really focusing on. So we kind of just knew where the market uh, since I was already in the industry, I knew where the market uh, was focusing, so we just focused on those counties specifically. Who are you pull? Who are you pulling the land information from? So the land information comes from OK County Records. They have an API uh, that you can tie into, uh, and then other courthouses that aren't on OK County Records. We basically go to their website and pull that information uh, off of there, and we just compile all that information. We uh, 
standardize it because um, each county reports information different. Um, and we kind of, like I said, standardize that into our platform so it's easy to search. Okay. My question, if it's coming through. Yeah. Is yeah. Related. Yes, okay. Um, on that note, and I, I um, am just not clear on all of the different sources from which you get the data. So is there any risk there that one of the data sources is, you know, could have an issue with you then <laughs> generating some revenue based on the data or is, is that pretty, you know? No, awful. so like the OK County records, uh, they, that's, I mean, that's, they sell that data to, mm -hmm. uh, to vendors or to individuals. Uh, the Oklahoma Corporation Commission, um, all of this is public record. Uh, so to drill a well, uh, like I said, it, there's, it requires legal filings and those filings have to be published online. They're also in a, a newspaper. If, you were, if you're in an area that has oil and gas activity, you'll notice in the newspaper, there's uh, the, the legal filings. Um, so it's all public information that we're gathering. Um, we're just making it easier uh, for users to access. Um, like I said, they can go to these websites or uh, these sources themselves. It just like I said, takes hours, if not days to compile it. Mm -hmm. So what would be the barrier for you to scale this and go to other states that obviously would find a need for a tool like this? So that's kind of, I get asked that a lot if we're going, because a lot of, a lot of our clients do operate in other states. Um, kind of the reason that I feel like we are uh, successful or are going to be, you know, more successful is, you know, my background is Oklahoma oil and gas. And so I know how the users need this information, um, you know, and what's important. Uh, I, I haven't worked in other states. Um, so although the information is somewhat the same, it is different. Um, and so to, to expand into other states, I would be comfortable if, if we brought on somebody that, you know, worked in those states. Uh, you know, the Googles, Facebooks, et cetera, they could be the best at gathering data and, you know, putting together uh, websites, but they don't work in that space. And so that's kind of where I think our uh, specialty is, uh, you know, that it's my background. Um, it's not just a, it's not just a market. We were like, Hey, this is a lot of potential income. Um, it's something that I was using every day, solve problem and, and tried to, to develop a solution. You made the land jam, the land man's job easier. Yes. Uh, specifically more so for a, uh, a land manager who's trying to decide who's buying in an area, um, you know, who's selling, uh, what areas are being, uh, have regulatory information to where a well is going to be potentially drilled. Um, like I said, the mineral companies are kind of our uh, sweet spot. And so they use our, our platform to say, hey, they, these companies are moving into this area that looks like they're going to drill a well. So let's get in there um, and try to, you know, buy minerals um, because, on the mineral side, I don't get into too much detail. Uh, the biggest production comes within the first year or two. Um, and so you wanna buy minerals before a well is drilled, otherwise you're late to the party. So they, they use our information to kind of uh, get a leg up on the competition. Um, Cody, my question's in regards to just your, um, the market size of your customers, um, cause this is, fairly foreign to me. <laughs> when you're looking at the potential of how many people could potentially purchase various um, plans, what is that looking like? And um, how do you see that expanding uh, throughout the next, you know, six months? Yeah, so the market, if you would have asked me this in 2016, was amazing. Uh, 2019, you know, 2020, I don't know if you paid attention to the prices, but they went negative uh, in 2020, you know, which, which hurt a lot of people. Uh, but as far as the market, um, you know, obviously there's a limit of customers that are going to be drilling or, or buying minerals, but, you know, hundreds to thousands, it just kind of depends on, you know, activity and prices. Um, and just kind of the political environment. Um, and you, that kind of references back to uh, the previous question on other states, since you know, I'm familiar with the Oklahoma uh, political environment and regulations where some, some states are more federal land. And so I don't really wanna get into those areas. Um, like I said, the market, uh, you know, hundreds to thousands, and it just kind of depends on 
um, price, but also uh, individual mineral owners is kind of an area that we're going to be targeting. And, you know, that can be a way bigger our audience than, you know, individual companies. Um, but like I said, oil and gas is, it's up and down. So it, it honestly just depends on prices and, and where those, you know, go. And unfortunately, I mean, it could go down to zero. Um, you, you know, you just don't know. We still have a couple more minutes for questions if there are any. Now, Cody, you're just a team of two, correct? Yeah, a team of two. Um, and that's where we plan to kind of leave it. Um, we kind of built the system to be automated uh, to where we don't have a ton of overhead. And that's going to help us survive, uh, you know, some of this downturn. Like said, this downturn, although, although it has hurt, it's also kind of been a blessing uh, to us since we are transparent on our prices. Uh, we are at a lower price point than some of the competitors. Um, so people are really watching, uh, you know, their dollars. Uh, and so now they're, you know, they're looking at us. Um, and so we want to keep our overhead low to be able to, like I said, survive the ups and downs because oil is going to go up, but it's also going to go right back down. Um, mm -hmm. So we just want to kind of keep, keep a steady uh, overhead. And then, like I said, we should be able to survive. Now, do you have a background to fix a problem per se? Your partner is out of commission. Do I have the background to, to fix the, the technology? Mm -hmm. uh, no, but we have, we have some things in place If you know, if something, you know, happened, um, to where, uh, contacts of his, uh, could jump in. They're just not really on, on payroll, um, you know, and they're not, you know, 50, 50 partner, but, um, you know, they can access the information and kind of take over. Okay. What is the top priority for you for the next six months? Uh, the next six months is kind of to just adapt to the market. Uh, like I said, it since prices went negative in the spring. We may have lost Cody there. But we were kind of gearing up towards the end of the uh, Q&A session. We were almost at 10 minutes. Um, Cody, can you hear us? No? OK, no worries. Hopefully, judges, that was, uh, that was pretty much uh, going towards the end of the Q&A. Uh, great job, Cody, and thank you for that great discussion. Um, judges, I will give you a few minutes to um, wrap up notes and see if I can I was trying to figure out how do I stop the screen. So up next, we have uh, Jamie Davis with Hidden Stars of Theater. Jamie, I'm going to bring you on the spotlight and feel free to start sharing your screen. All right, Dia, can you hear me? Yes, give me just a second. Okay, you are on this spotlight and you should be able to share your screen as well. All right, are you seeing my screen? Yes. And let me get Jamie on the spotlight and we are ready to go whenever you are. Uh, my screen is frozen, give me one second. Mm -hmm. Let me try to reshare it. I think it's set too long waiting to begin. <laughs> Let's try that again. All right, are you seeing my screen now, Dia? Yes, we are, and we can hear you as well. All right, very good. 
As you can see from these slides, data shows that theater education is an important part of a well-rounded educational experience, teaching skills that students use throughout life, like maybe when giving a, a pitch in a contest, as a random example. So when something happens to disrupt effective theater education, it's a big issue. That's what happened in March of this year when the villain of our show, COVID-19, took the stage. At that time, educators around the world found themselves suddenly forced to teach in a virtual environment. Most educational disciplines had ample online resources to draw from. However, since speech and theater education rely so heavily on interpersonal communication, those resources simply did not exist for those teachers. Hi, my name is Jamie Davis. I've been involved informally in theater education in Oklahoma for many years. When I saw my friends, these educators needed good online resources for theater education, I knew I could help. You see, my parents were theater educators in this area for many years, and I've been involved in all aspects of theater for over 40 years. Plus, being unemployed because of COVID-19, I had a lot of time on my hands. So literally one day on a whim, I created the hero of our show, the Hidden Stars of Theater. The Hidden Stars of Theaters is a free educational web series with supporting curriculum. It's designed to introduce students to all the careers in the world of theater that don't get to take a curtain call. The people backstage, stagehands, designers, directors, stage managers, many, many more. Not just telling about what they do, but actually introducing them to the real people, telling their story. Initially, I thought if I could help a dozen schools in Oklahoma, it would be a success. But what I discovered was the need was far greater than I thought. You see, Within three weeks of release, we were in 125 schools in all 50 states and in eight additional countries. But we were only getting started because now, today, the show is being used by over, actually, since this slide, we've gone up to about 1,200 schools in 31 countries. We're in every continent but Antarctica. They don't have English-speaking schools there, but we're still working on it. Beamed right out of right here for, on YouTube from a 1965 camper in my backyard in South Broadway in Ada, Oklahoma, the cultural center of the universe. So why the sudden success? Well, let's look at some reviews to see. So this is a resource we've needed even before the pandemic and is one of I will use even beyond this time of virtual learning, says Jane, an Oklahoma educator. You see, it seemed the need wasn't a new one just because of the pandemic. It was a need that had been around and will still be around after the pandemic. I'm honestly on the brink of tears with Thanksgiving. Theater is the only fine arts class in our school and we have 30 year old textbooks. I get, I get emails like this every week from theater teachers who are so thankful. And then from Evan Insane, the director of the National Tour of Rent, big time. If we lose this generation, we lose our audience. Thank you for helping to improve theater education worldwide. You see, Broadway and professional theater has found out about it and behind us. You know, Alex Lackamore from Hamilton, he sent me an email to congratulate me on the show. And since March, I've interviewed 41 theater professionals, including Tony Award winners from right here in this camper. Of course, I'm not doing this alone. I got a team. Most of them were guests on the show and then called me and asked if they could be a part of the team. Mike Ruckstedt, my co-producer, sound guy from a little show called Hamilton. Carrick Doherty, he's the company manager for Rent, the national tour. Devery North, our director of educational content, she is a professional theater educator and deal is company manager for theater, theater tours. Kim Wren is our marketer and Kim is from right here in Ada, involved with Ada Shakespeare Company. Well, how are we doing this? Well, our show has two acts. Act one is donor supported and supported out of my pocket because right now I can do the show for about $200 a month. So I'm paying for about half. About half is coming in through a website called Patreon where people can go support creators like me by setting up monthly subscriptions. And also, I got about $3,000. Yeah, one at the minute. Um, act two, our goal in act one is to become an educational nonprofit by February 2021. Then act two, we already have set up from the press, professional theater community three major companies who want to support us with corporate sponsorship once we're nonprofit. And we can qualify for grants in the arts and the educational uh, realm. And our goal is to expand this to the world even more through more resources than just the web series through the hidden stars uh through the hidden stars logo and and brand and we're going to be able to do it because there's we're in a tiny percentage of the market it's any school that teaches theater and social media is our stage our marketing has just been done through youtube and facebook through five facebook groups we've had this phenomenal growth we've spent zero dollars on marketing 
Zero dollars on marketing. When we get an actual marketing budget, it's going to be insane the amount of growth we'll have. So what's your role? The money from the big pitch ADA is what we need to Time's finish it. our nonprofit status. So you could be the impetus that takes us over into act two of this show. So join us in bringing Broadway NYC to South Broadway ADA, then taking South Broadway ADA to the world. Thank you. Who wants to go make a show with me? Huh? Great job, Jamie. <laughs> and I, I love that you're, you talk about this element of uh, it's more than just theater. It's about the skills that you'll gain from it to be able to do other things in life. So um, I, I love that message that you're sharing. I'm curious to know, how did you get into your first set of schools and um, how are the teachers actually using the tools in their online education right now? Yeah, great question. So literally what I did was I created the first episode with the guest was a friend of mine who was in professional theater and was a hidden star. And I had uh, Premiere Pro on my laptop, edited it, put it out there. And um, I just went to, uh, to Facebook and searched theater education groups and found five of them. It's about total distribution right now. And those groups have about 30,000 educators. And I just posted a link to it and put it out there and said, hey, anybody want a free resource? And I was expecting a few. I spent days at that point <laughs> manually typing in emails into my mailing address. And teachers are using it in unique ways. Some of them um, are using it for just their tech kids. That's the larger schools. Um, I'm telling you though, right now, because of the way that education has gone during the pandemic, anything online uh, is, is crazy. So every week I give them a new episode and, and a worksheet that goes with it for their students. So we, we email that to them. Some just go straight to YouTube and download it. And then they assign it to their kids um, through whatever venue they're using virtually. And the kids watch it and then the kids fill out the worksheet and turn it into them. And then they email us and tell us how great it is. Even moms and dads, it's crazy the emails we get. Well, Jamie, I say you have one of the best radio voices I've ever heard. <laughs> I'll let you well, Tyler, I started on Magic 96.7 KADA. Hey, yeah. I, I love it. Okay, so the biggest question is how – I love what you're doing. How are you going to make money? Yeah, so money will come uh, through sponsorship. A nonprofit entity, even though it's nonprofit, is still bringing in a lot of revenue. So right now we have three companies. Um, I can't say who they are yet because they haven't signed on the line, but they are, they're – major players in the professional theater world who have said because of the marketing that they get, because they not only market it to Broadway and national tours, some of the lighting companies, their biggest potential clients are educational. And so they want in that space. One of them has had me interview three of their reps to put on episodes so they can use for their own personal marketing. Well, they're going to be supporting us because we're nonprofit and they get the tax break. Um, as corporate sponsors. Plus, through the Broadway side, which is a whole nother need that we haven't talked about is, I have found this group of people who've never had a voice and they've chosen my show as their voice, these, these hidden stars, which is pretty cool. And they're all pushing me to go through the National um, Endowment for the Arts because what we're doing is we're cataloging, we're cataloging these professionals and nobody's ever done that before. So we're gonna have the first catalog of theater professionals in the tech end of things. And that qualifies us for grants from the National Endowment for the Arts that can actually be fairly sizable grants. So are now are you primarily on YouTube? Like, sorry, is that kind of, now? So is that an advertisement money can come in from that? Um, kind of yeah, absolutely. That? Yeah, eventually that is will monetize in YouTube. We're about halfway to what we need to do. There's some actually quite big numbers you need for viewership and and subscribers and those types of things through YouTube to monetize. And so we're about halfway there. So um, and every month our growth towards that is exponential. So within three months, we propose to be uh, monetized through Facebook as well. But that won't be our, uh, when you really get into the monetization through YouTube, you, you hear about the millionaires that come through that. Most of that's actually through corporate sponsorship based upon their um, distribution. Jamie, I really like this. Let me just say as a, um, Assuming you can hear me, yes. I can. Okay, cool. As a as a former theater nerd myself, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really got me hyped up. 
Um, so I'm just wondering then, it sounds like you are the sort of like big milestone for you next is actually incorporating as a nonprofit. Correct. Is that correct? Yeah. And then from there, you're looking at sort of what, I guess, what does the next year look like for you? Because it's really interesting that you say, this is something that can stick around beyond COVID. So I'm yes. wondering more of what you, what you mean by that and what are you looking at in terms of longevity here? Yeah, absolutely. So the hidden stars is the unique aspect of it. And, and I'll be real honest, that was just something I stumbled on. Um, I have a tech theater background. My stepdad was the tech director at East Central University for 30 something years. And so I know there's not a lot of love for the people backstage. And that's where I wanted to, the whole reason I created it the way I did. Well, I also knew that most theater educators are performance-based and not tech-based. So there's a huge need for technical education in theater. Um, some of my guests, Scott C. Parker, uh, Christy uh, Clausen, Ross, Tissy Ross Clausen, these are uh, national experts in theater education in tech. And they've already, I've met with them and they want to partner with some things they're doing that basically I'll be fun funneling um, kids and programs into that. So we want to expand our base of resources in the world of technical theater education for theater education around the world because it's a huge need. There just isn't anything there. If you've been in a program, you know, most of the teaching is around the acting portion and, oh, we'll do the tech because we got to do the show. Well, we want to change that because there's safety issues that, that are involved when it's not done right. And we want to provide these teachers with easy, free resources to be able to do it right because it needs to happen and it just isn't there i mean honestly i put a show out produced here by myself and it, it exploded right um it just shows the need and the emails we get on a weekly basis just back that up and so that's our goal is to expand that and uh find this this niche that we found you know we thought we were filling a need for quarantine what we found was a much bigger hole that uh, we're going to be able to continue to feed which is really exciting it is yeah Congrats on that. I wanted to continue a little bit with what Tyler had asked earlier about, you know, um, what the process is going to look like for making money because nonprofits can be money making organizations. And, um, you know, it seems like with what you're doing, there's this ability to make money to give back to what is being lost currently in the schools. Um, what processes have you gone through with some of these other organizations that you can't name just yet to determine how much you'll be able to charge to create more content? Because it seems like the content is really the product and um, to create more content means more time, more energy, more people, uh, software, et cetera. So uh, what have some of these organizations told you uh, is a price point that they would be able to pay so that you can continue to grow and have more content and more people. Yeah, and, and unfortunately, until we get that nonprofit status, they don't want to talk them out. I've, I tried, especially for this, because I knew I would be asked that question <laughs> to get an idea. And, and the other problem is right now, Broadway is on hold. So we're talking about an industry that until next spring uh, is is not, although there two of the companies have said we're doing other things, we'll be good to support you. One of them is specifically tied to the touring industry and really may not be able to kick in until that time. Um, but the, the the product actually, I would say, is is the schools in a way, because who we're attracting is the companies that want to market to that space, if that makes sense. So the the web series is attracting the schools and then the marketers, these companies want to be able to market to the schools to show their latest products and things, which I've, uh, I've already done some unboxing as you're familiar with that, which, uh, you know, I guess I'm a YouTube sensation because I have a hater and I have been asked to, to uh, uh, show some sample products. <laughs> but that's it, right? These companies want to pay us to um, support the program so that because we have who they want to get to. And they can, you know, by us highlighting them and their products and showing their products. And, and I feel good about it because they're products that the schools need to know about. You know, when I do that, they're only things that are helpful for them that are going to benefit the schools in the long run that the teachers don't have time to research. And so then we're talking about bringing marketing money in from those companies. And the three that we have, we haven't gone after anyone. They came to us. And they're, they're not small companies. They are 
top of the line, have products in the Broadway on Broadway doing the lighting and I have to be careful. So when you mean it's it's okay, I'll say something then. When you mean yeah. products, you're meaning, for example, there's like um like a certain lighting system that is yeah. known as like a really great lighting system and there's maybe a school level brand that could be purchased and so that's it be, and we would love to be the sponsor of it so people know rather than using the same lighting that they've always had or just kind of going after whatever's cheap yeah the educational market is bigger than than the broadway market mm -hmm. because broadway has limited shows schools there's you know thousands and thousands of school theaters around and so um that's where their bigger market is well so you know that's that's where they want access and we we have that access um and they've seen the the growth and they've seen the program and experienced it and believe in it and know its power and so they approached us saying hey we'd, we'd like to look at uh, supporting you would, are you looking for sponsors yes yes we are <laughs> and and all right we are at time for q a so thank you so much jamie for your presentation and thank you judges we are almost to the end and we have our last uh, participant so let me Thank you all. Thank, thank you, Jamie. Great presentation. Lindsay, I'm going to put you to the uh, spotlight and you should be able to share your screen. Lindsay, you may have to start your, uh, there you go. There we go. All right. So our final uh, participant for the day is Lindsay Bonner. She's an intern with Cantrell Solutions and she's presenting uh, the new product line Expiration Ninja today. Expiration Ninja offers quick and effective ways to keep track of virtually any kind of expirations with ease. So with that, Lindsay, whenever you're ready to go. Okay. Hello, everyone. I am Lindsay Bonner with Cantrell Solutions, and I'm here to tell you about Expiration Ninja. Everyone, please take a moment to close your eyes and now imagine you or one of your loved ones is sick with COVID-19. A doctor has prescribed home health, but no one comes because their licenses are expired. Isn't that terrifying? Expiration Ninja can prevent this from ever happening. Expiration Ninja is a user-friendly cloud-based software that tracks, stores, and notifies you of your essential certifications and licenses for you and your employees. With so many employees to keep up with, and each employee having several required certifications and licenses, it can be an overwhelming task. Spreadsheets are not working, and they are difficult to read and time consuming. Without knowing, you could have employees working illegally and treating patients without being properly certified. This can cost the business thousands of dollars in fines and potential lawsuits. Expiration Ninja is the solution. It safely stores your important data, it is fast and easy to use, and completely customizable to your business's specific needs. When you subscribe to Expiration Ninja, not only are you getting a high quality software, but you're getting an entire team of experienced technology experts to protect you and your business. Here's a glimpse of Expiration Ninja's dashboard. Once you select a monthly subscription, you can get started immediately. The dashboard allows you to quickly see which items expiration dates are upcoming. Here's the employee view, which allows you to customize and manage all information about an employee. This is accessible to not only the HR manager, but also the specific employee can have a personal password to view his or her personal file so they can see their own upcoming expirations. Because Expiration Ninja is cloud-based, customers do not have to purchase any additional software or download anything to their desktops. They simply pay a monthly subscription plan, and with cloud-based technology, they can obtain their information even if their device is lost or stolen. Be with Expiration Ninja, all that is needed is an internet connection and a web browser, and you can access it anytime, any place. Our target market is home healthcare agencies. Employment in healthcare occupations is projected to grow 15% over the next nine years, adding about 2.4 million new jobs. With those jobs, it opens a great opportunity for Expiration Ninja to track all their essential certifications and licenses. Our marketing strategy is to advertise Expiration Ninja through well-known platforms such as Facebook and LinkedIn. We plan to quickly expand Expiration Ninja to many different markets, from teachers to government and small businesses. 
Because Expiration Ninja is completely customizable, we are able to expand to many different markets. Another goal that we have is to have a positive impact to the community. Expiration Ninja will help aid us home health care agencies to track their employee certifications and licenses, and it will bring money from all over the United States to aid us economy. Our Expiration Ninja team would utilize the money for marketing. With a huge boost in our marketing campaign, we project by the end of year one, Expiration Ninja will expand its customer base to approximately 30 to 50 new customers per month. With Expiration Ninja, you can rest easy knowing that your business is in the best hands and we will protect your information, keeping you from missing another license or certification renewal. Let Expiration Ninja do the heavy lifting of records management so that you can get back to what's most important in your business. Join Expiration Ninja today. Thank you. Thank hey, you. Lindsay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to get the... There we go. Okay, I can see you guys now. <laughs> Uh, my question is, did you say it's monthly or is it yearly? Um, it is um, monthly subscriptions. Okay, and do, you, do, you, do we have that cost? Yes. Here we go. Can you view, see it okay? Yes, I can see okay. it now. Okay. Yes, we have many different um, options to fit each business's specific needs. Well, I will say in the real estate world, you need to not only go after healthcare, but go after the realtors because we, we aren't always the best about keeping things together. And we do have um, our deadlines that we also have systems that we have to keep up with. And so definitely look at expanding to the real estate companies, especially the larger ones. Okay, great. Thank I'm, you. I'm curious on that note, what is the current process for managing this um, sort of data and I mean maybe in real estate too I'm just not familiar what is what is the sort of current way that this is managed and how is this an innovation on that I mean I can see clearly if that nothing like this exists but I'm not sure what is your competition like um, right now companies are using spreadsheets um, they're just putting it in a, just a regular file and trying to keep up with that and I know there's many reminder apps out there, but none of them do exactly how we do, how we keep it all in one place. And with the cloud-based software, that also makes us unique, but it just, and it sends the notifications within 30 to 60 and 90 days. So you're getting a, a great heads up on that certification or license before it expires. Can you define a data set and data set items within this pricing? Okay, so the data set items would be, uh, for example, like your number of employees, but not only employees, but you could also track vehicles, um, whatever really you wanna keep a track of, honestly, within your business. Um, because like, for example, in government with law enforcement, you would wanna track your employees, but also all of your uh, patrol vehicles and everything, keep up with all that information. So that is so that is how we break down on the data set items. Well, did that answer your question? Uh, well, I guess I was just trying to understand. So you say, or I guess maybe give me a an example. If I wanted to use the free service, when you say a data set and then data set items, is that like I can put in? Oh, I, I don't you can put up to uh, ten data set items. And um, on the three data set action items, I believe that is for each data set that would give you three additional action items. So you can put in, it's completely customizable. And because this is a new business, we would absolutely work with you to add whatever you would like into it. But it just, that, that's, that's how that works. It's just um, employees or items or any additional items that take more space. I hope that answered your question. Answered your question. <laughs> I'm sorry. Are you calling a data set the person like me one? Uh, the data set items. Yes. Well, well, like I said, it could be employees or it could be um, vehicles. Wh whatever has an expiration on it um, can be a data set item. 
So just now, now is this only free for the first month and then I start paying for it after that, after I kind of get used to it? Or is this one person and then I can put up to 10, like my two vehicles, licenses, and as soon as I go over 10, then I start paying? Uh, yes, uh, that, that's, how it, um, that's how we have it set up right now. Um, is of course, if you did expand past 10 data set items, we would recommend um, moving up to the starter package. But if you stay within 10, it is that that is the package that you would, the subscription you would stay with would be the free option. So if I'm a big home health care company and I have 400 employees, let's say in Ada, that I want to track all of their certifications and use this tool, I would need the unlimited tool? Um, most likely, yes. I mean, if you have that many employees, I would very much recommend the unlimited. But of course, this is our starting point. So, I mean, if you didn't need the unlimited, I'm sure that we could work with you to find the right fit for you. But at this moment, that's how we have it set up. But because we are, we are a new uh, business and everything, we would, we, we could work with you. Like if you were 110 or 115, I'm sure there would be, it wouldn't be necessary to bump you to the unlimited just yet. Mm -hmm. So you are obviously a B2B model because that's who your customers, but, and you mentioned you wanted to acquire 30 to 50 new customers. So that's 30 to 50 new businesses that have this need. And I imagine that would mean ex beyond data. So your plan for sort of scale, I'm curious to hear a little bit more about how are you planning to acquire these customers and move into markets outside of ADA? Um, well, of course, um, like I said, we starting with home health, and then growing and uh, we're doing a lot of, our team is doing a lot of research to figure out what other markets this would fit. Um, so after that, like I said, grow within Ada and try uh, other small businesses. We're very focused on from home health to small businesses because I know um, you can fit a lot of different <laughs> uh, categories in there. But after really when we'll take that launch to like you said to even further outside of ADA is really with our marketing. That's our plan to how we're going to get to them and, and get those numbers. And after we've been had many customers coming, we'll have a lot more information about what fits what um, business and what what is what's needed, what's missing. Yeah. So that that's the plan for right now. Why home health? Why is that the target right now? Do they have more than 10 licenses that they need to keep up with? Um, home health has so many different employees. They have the therapists, the nurses, they have occupational therapists, physical therapists. There's just a number of careers that are listed in home health. And we just, we saw that that was the best fit because it needed it, um, that it, it fits their needs quite well. And with COVID, I know um, nurses and stuff, it's really difficult to think of them trying to keep up with all of this right now with moving all over everywhere, you know, not, and, and that's just healthcare in general that we plan to grow within that, but home health just fit really well with the, with the local businesses. And we did research and we talked to them and we actually have a couple pilot customers who are in the home health um, industry and they, they don't have anything like this. So okay. I hope that answered your question. Yeah. Um, I may have missed it, but can you tell me a little bit more about your team um, for expiration and check? Uh, yes, absolutely. Let me, if I can get back to it. Um, but I am part of the, um, the business Cantrell Solutions, which is a local business here in Ada. And I am an ECU student, so I am just across the street, um, a business student, of course. Um, and here is our team. It is a very small team, but we feel because it is um, technology that we feel with a small team, we're gonna be able to cover a large number of customers because we need a very small amount for the marketing and of course, support services. Great, so Cantrell Solutions is the business and Expression and just one of the products. Yes, yes, absolutely. Well, you've got a good team, Lindsay. <laughs> Thank you so much. I know I, I feel very blessed. Yes.
or is the individual nurse doctor the data set? Okay, so just give me one sec. I'll get back to that slide. Because a hundred dollars for a business that doesn't, I mean, that's that's doable, you know. And if, but if each doctor, each nurse is paying, you know, the ten dollars or whatever it is, then uh, then then that's a lot more marketing involved. Okay, so the employee is the data set, and so ten data set items would be ten data set items to cover each employee. Mm -hmm. Does that make more sense? I mean, I understand what you're saying with a lot mm -hmm. of. Um, with that many employees, that's a lot to cover. Right. So yeah, absolutely. That would, it would, um, like I said, completely customizable to meet, meet the needs of, meet, meet the needs of that many employees. So definitely. And like I said, of course we would, we're, we aren't in that, um, in that stage yet for a big hospital, but we will, abs we are absolutely looking into that though. Cause I know, like you said, hospitals with healthcare workers, this this is an absolutely a necessary thing for them. This is essential for them. So yeah, we we like I said, we're not set for that yet, but we're definitely looking into that how we could help them and work for a, a larger scale of a hospital. Okay. Thank you. It's still a little unclear to me, Lindsay, the difference between data set and data set item. So is it is a data set of individual employee then and the items are like all of the different potential certifications that may fall under that one person? Sorry, we're just we're all trying no. to wrap our brains around this. <laughs> no, you're good. Um, I'm trying to I am sorry that I'm not making this very clear. I know it's a little confusing. I but I believe what you said is correct that the data set would be the employee and the data set items would be the items to cover the employee. So what you said, I believe is correct. As I said, I'm part of- Well, now, 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 Lindsay, I'm sorry. Now the data set that we're talking about with the one, that's the employer and now is the 10 the employees or does like me as one employee, do I have 10 items that can go underneath me? Because that's- okay, uh, so for, for example, like you would have a data set would be nurses and then your data set item would be the specific nurse, the uh, specific employee, okay. and then the action item would be the certifications. Okay. I see. So that makes, that's it. That's I, the answer I was looking for. Yeah, okay. my own <laughs> business has nine nurses, so I'm good with the free one. But then let's say my business has 30 nurses so I would need the enhanced one. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Yes. Okay. We nailed I think, it. I think we got <laughs> it now. <laughs> got it. Okay, so you're getting me. Okay, good. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. All right. about that. It's all good. It's, it's yeah. good for you to know in the future too, to lay out an example where we can conceptualize it. Like, okay, this yeah. is the business. This is the, you know, different stakeholders. Yes, yes, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, we are at uh, time for Q&A. Great discussion. Great job, Lindsay. Thank you, uh, judges. So with that, we are, um, we are at the end of the presentations. So now what's going to happen is, uh, Lindsay, if you could st stop sharing your screen for just yes, a I am. Thank you. There we go. We're good. Okay, so we're going to take a quick five minutes break. Our judges gonna, are going to go into a separate virtual room to uh, have their discussion and come up with the top winners. And uh, let's meet back at uh, 4.30 and uh, we, I'll keep the call on. And if you are logged into Facebook, just stay on with us and we will be back at 4.30 to go and do the People's Choice Awards. So see you all in just five minutes. So we've got, uh, we're just waiting on Freddie. Freddie, whenever you're ready, um, 
uh, we'll get started in about three minutes. And what's going to happen is um, I'm going to put the spotlight on all of you. And in the order that we presented, uh, you'll get about 30 seconds to answer the question, why should people vote for you as the People's Choice Award winner? So this is going to be super quick and fun, but uh, this is your chance to tell everyone why uh, they should vote for you. All right, let's see. And then again, just the order was Anthony, Fredisha, um, Naresh, Cody, Jamie, and Lindsay. Great job, everyone. That was super awesome. I'm so proud of all of you. Great job. That was fun. All right, one more minute and we, we will get started. Thank you, Jim, for the comments. Jim Lawson has served as um, a judge in the previous years and uh, Pawn and Talk Technology Center is the sponsor. So super excited about that and thank you for your support. All right, Freddie is back. Okay. Can we give it one more minute? Okay, we are at 4.30 and um, Anthony, do you wanna kick us off? Again, this is a super quick pitch of why people should vote for you and we will go in, in the order. So uh, we'll let you kick it off. All right, um, we need fun, we need community and who doesn't wanna go on a treasure hunt? The woodchuck is a great opportunity to increase your outdoor activity and fun with your family. So that is why you should vote for the woodchuck. Thank you. Awesome, good job. All right, Freddie, you're up next. I think it is so important that we help one another get through this pandemic and through um, stressful situations throughout life. That's why we care and co is here. And I hope that everyone sees how great this idea is and then we can get this branched off into all colleges so that we can help everyone on their journey throughout, throughout life. Thank you. Naresh. Hi, everybody. Uh, this uh, project has been a community project. Uh, I've just been lucky to sort of uh, be the technical uh, uh, designer or uh, the technical guy on this project. Uh, this was built uh, through the effort of a lot of people. And uh, that is the reason I think uh, this product deserves uh, the Community Choice Award. It's, uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Naresh. Cody, you're up next. Uh, I feel like it's such a hard question, but I mean, I don't know if I can answer it directly. I just want to kind of congratulate everybody um, and then just hope we're all here for each other. Starting a business is tough, um, you know, especially the founders and, and those that are, you know, have, have revenue generating and those that are in the idea phase. Um, you know, it's tough. So I just hope, we're, you know, we, we all stay connected and reach out to each other and then those that are in the audience that are watching, um, you know, just just be there for for them because there's just a lot of up and down um, emotions with starting a business. So I think it's great what uh, the city of Ada is doing, um, and I just hope to see it, you know, continue to expand. All right. So next, Jamie. Yeah. Thanks, Dia. Um, you know, uh, theater education is is vitally important and of of all of the products which are all incredible and all did a great job today i think the hidden stars of theater is 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 a little different in that it is something that isn't necessarily supporting a business it's supporting arts education around the world and it's supporting arts educators that right now are in dire straits and we from right here in ada can make a huge impact and so you know a vote for the hidden stars of theater really is a vote for arts education and for arts educators 
Awesome. And last but not least, Lindsay. Lindsay, you're muted. Hello. <laughs> oh, we good now? <laughs> okay. Expiration Ninja is important. It keeps people working and it could be life-saving. This keeps our frontline fighters, our nurses, our valued nurses going and it can helps them to continue to save lives. Thank you. Awesome. Great job. And uh, I've only let them know about this question today. So everybody's kind of on the spot with this. But with that, I'm going to share my screen and the much awaited time. How can you vote for the People's Choice Award? So here's this QR code that you can either scan on your phone and it'll pop up a link or you can just go directly to the link and you will be able to vote for the People's Choice Award. And we will uh, keep this open for the next um, seven to 10 minutes. So please start getting your votes in. Okay, everyone, I think there was a little glitch in um, the poll. So give me just a second and let me make sure I can restart this. So hang on to the same link and we should, we should be there in just a second. Give me just a quick second. Okay, um, the poll should be on now. Can somebody put it in the chat if it's working, just to make sure. Okay, looks like we are on. Okay, so again, for anybody who missed it, the link is posted and the QR code is on. Please start uh, voting for your favorite participant.
All right, we're gonna give it three more minutes for the poll to be on. So please get your votes in. Okay, I'm looking at the live poll now. It's not visible to you all right now, but I can see it and it's we're getting pretty head to head. I'm getting updates from the judges room that it's taking a little longer to make a decision. So we'll actually keep it, um, keep it open for two more minutes. So you all have two more minutes till we close the poll. All right, we are at 4.40 p.m. Is everyone ready to see who is our People's Choice Award winner this year? All right. Okay, so I hope everybody's had a chance to vote and we are going to open up the page and see the live results. All right, so we have a winner here. The winner is Lindsay Bonner with Expiration Ninja. Congratulations, Lindsay. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Well done. Awesome. All right, with that, um, we are going to get started with the award ceremony part of our uh, presentation today, uh, of our uh, program today. And uh, to kick it off, I would like to talk a little bit about a program that we've been um, doing for the last year or so. And uh, this is our second year doing it. And uh, it is called the Startup Ada Bootcamp. Uh, oops, the little head. Okay, so the Startup Ada Bootcamp is a five week program where uh, we have entrepreneurs who apply to this program to go through uh, five weeks of um, curriculum based topics to learn about how do we take a business from a idea stage to a pitch ready stage. So this year we started in October on October 6th and for and wrapped up successfully the program last year and we have six founders who have successfully completed this program. As you can see from this picture, uh, we've been hosting it online and we've um, had speakers come in from all over the state to help uh, push through these curriculum and push through the workshops. So. And I'm also very excited to announce before the award ceremony that uh, this program was actually awarded a silver award this year by the International Economic Development Council at the conference. Uh, so Ada was on the radar and that's always, always a good thing. And I'm very proud to announce the six graduates who have been through the Startup Ada Bootcamp and they have uh, successfully completed all five weeks. And uh, you have heard from some of them today who got selected as the big pitch finalists. And we also have a couple of them who will be sharing their quick pitches uh, here in just a second. So I want to announce the names of the uh, six graduates. First is Fredisha Neely with We Care and Co. Congratulations, Fredisha. Lindsay Bonner with Expiration Ninja. Great job, Lindsay. Thank you for uh, going through the program. And then we have Naresh Janeja with Breadify USA, Chris and Matthew McMahon with Schlushed, which is coming up on Main Street here, uh, almost ready to launch. 
uh, Juan Soriano with his business is to be announced, but he's uh, looking at a food truck um, business to just bring more diversification in the food scene in Ada. And Snigda Alatur, who is also working on a software-based business and her business name is to be announced. So at this time, I would like to invite um, Chris McMahon with Slushed to give us a quick pitch of your business and also share a little bit about your experience um, with the bootcamp. And Chris, you are muted. And give me just a second to put you on spotlight. Better? Yes. All right. Uh, as everyone said, my name is Chris McPan. I'm one of the founders of Slushed LLC here in uh, Ada. Uh, we're actually located right across the street from Polos. Uh, we uh, actually passed our health inspection today. So we're waiting uh, for our ABLE license to come back and we'll be able to open up. Um, recently, actually today, um, Cody, uh, Marissa actually uh, announced us as an Ada Main Street partner as well. Uh, so we want to work really healthy with the people here in Ada and, uh, you know, really liven Ada back up because there's not much to do here. Uh, and so, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, Slush LLC is basically an alcoholic slushy company. So we uh, basically we serve uh, takeout and curbside alcoholic slushies to go, as well as about the five different flavors of jello shots, everything from lemon meringue pie to strawberry shortcake. Um, and I think I even have one for peach cobbler right now. Um, so, uh, we're going to mix up our jello shots and our flavors going throughout the year as we change seasons that way, uh, you know, you may walk into the shop one week and we have a drink called the Hulk and you come back next month and, uh, it's something made out of rum. Uh, so it'll be a lot of fun and we can't wait to open up. Awesome. Thank you so much, Chris. Appreciate it. And thank you for putting in the work, uh, not just in starting a business, but also going through the bootcamp and uh, being a great participant. And good luck to you. We are so excited for this business to launch. It was a, uh, it has started bootcamp. So a fantastic tool because it allowed me um, the ability to take my younger brother, who was not a business student and take my other younger brother, who is a computer science student and teach them business skills that I learned, you know, throughout getting a degree. Uh, whereas they wouldn't have had the opportunity to actually know those. Um, so basically it lightens the load on me to be able to know everything in the business all at once. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. Uh, next, we have Kwan, who would also uh, share a little bit about his business. And Kwan, give me just a second to add you on the spotlight. Okay, so the floor is yours. Hey, can you guys hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Juan Soriano. Uh, I just uh, I kind of came up with this idea of just trying to bring a food truck where we can sell a variety of sandwiches and like different uh, Puerto Rican foods that we don't get to experience here in Ada. Like, uh, like he was saying, you know, like, uh, there's not really much to do here in Ada. And when it comes to food, there's like a source of options you know like let's say you leave the lot or you leave another bar in town and it's 11 12 o'clock at night and you're you're hungry or you want a sandwich after hanging out with your friends i want to be able to provide a food truck that's not stationary but that can just kind of hop around with easy access where you're not having trouble to park or get into the spot but uh so that's kind of just what i'm what i'm trying to do i'm kind of trying to start the food truck where we can not only sell sandwiches, but just different cultural foods like plantains. Like I asked a lot of people around here if they know what a plantain or what it is. And it blows my mind because those are things that we kind of live off of. And we, we eat like on a daily basis in Puerto Rico and it's just succulent, you know, and I want to be able to provide that to people here in Ada and just different, different uh, cultural foods. You know, it's not just sandwiches, but, like empanadas and just other stuff that we find everywhere in Puerto Rico. And I don't think that would be too difficult. And that's why I'm kind of sticking to that because I know it would work. And I haven't found many people that once I provide those flavors, they, they love it. And they're like, where can I get more of that? I'm like, well, to like actually get this all figured out. But so, yeah, that's awesome, kind of where awesome. I'm at. Thank you, Kwan, Thank you for sharing. And we really, uh, 
diversification food is awesome for a smaller community. So I'm excited that you're working on this. And again, congratulations for going through the boot camp. Well, I want to thank you guys and I appreciate it for so much helpful information. Thank you. All right. So that wraps up uh, the demo day for our startup Ada Bootcamp. Up next, um, I'm going to share my screen really quick so we can uh, look at the agenda for the award ceremony. Uh, so we will be kicking it off today with uh, the People's Choice Award. And Chris, if you're with us, I am going to um, add you on the spotlight here so you can Tell us a little bit. Obviously, we already saw who is the winner of the People's Choice Award this year. It's Lindsay Bonner with uh, Expiration Ninja. So, uh, Chris, uh, I am going to add you to the spotlight. And I would also like to introduce uh, Chris. Uh, he is uh, with Citizens Bank of Ada and he's the public relations officer. Hi, Dia. Hey, guys, what a great, great. Uh group of uh, people this year. I was so impressed with everyone. And congratulations from Citizens Bank, Lindsay. Congratulations to you for being the People's Choice Award winner. Uh, I don't think that uh, this is probably my favorite year uh, of contestants. You guys really did a boom job as far as presenting your, uh, your products. And uh, it was really a good time to be able to see all those great ideas. Uh, we want to uh, congratulate each and every one of you again. And again, Lindsay, congratulations to you from Citizens Bank. Thank you, awesome. sir. And I actually have the award here, which we will be giving to all our participants. Uh, but for right now, if we can get a quick virtual picture with a thumbs up, Chris and Lindsay. Thank you, awesome. Okay, so up next, we have the second place for the idea stage category. And this is sponsored by First United Bank of Ada. So, and Lucas Clark, who is the community uh, bank president will be presenting this award. Lucas, if you can turn your video on, I will add you to the spotlight. All right. Okay, Lucas, it's all yours. Thanks, Dia. I'm Lucas Clark with First United Bank. And First United Bank is so excited to be a sponsor once again to the Big Pitch and really appreciate Dia and the Ada Jobs Foundation, the work they do for the event. Uh, congratulations to all the contestants, all the winners. And again, uh, we're so excited to be a part of this. So thanks, Dia. Thank you, Lucas. All right, is everybody ready? Drum roll. So the second place winner of this year's idea stage category is Anthony with Punch and Trees. And Anthony, I'm going to bring you to the spotlight if you can turn your video on. All right, Anthony, congratulations. And let's let's uh, pose for a virtual photo. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Lucas. And thank you, Anthony. All right, so up next, we have the first place for the idea stage category. And this uh, category is uh, sponsored by REI Oklahoma. And we have with us today, Kelby Owens, who is the communications manager for our REI Oklahoma. Kelby, if you could please turn your video on, I will add you to the spotlight. Okay, awesome. All right, Kelby, all yours. Well, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Kelby Owens, like you said, from Oklahoma, and we are so excited to be. Kelby, your audio is just a, a. It seems like it's just from a little far. If you could try one more time. Any better? Yes, that is much better. Okay, okay. perfect, perfect. And uh, like you said, I'm Kelby Owens. Kelby, the audio is still not coming on on my end. Is anybody else having that issue or is it? Yes, Dia, we're not able to hear. It okay. seems like his microphone is covered up or? Maybe because your microphone, I guess, Kristen, that's a good, good point. Any better now? Yes, yeah, we, we could hear that. 
Okay. <laughs> I actually had a post-it note that I hadn't placed in that spot on my laptop before, so I apologize. Let's try one more time. <laughs> so I am Kelby uh, with ARIA Oklahoma. We've pro been providing support and guidance to small business owners for about uh, 30 years now. Small business ownership is no easy task. So we're inspired by each of you. We encourage you to keep moving forward. This year has certainly been an interesting year, not only for small business owners, but the teams that support you as well. So we're, keep, we're gonna keep moving forward and keep fighting for you and you just keep pushing ahead. That's a wonderful message, Kelby. I'm, I'm glad we got to hear that. Okay, can we get a drum roll for the first place winner for the idea stage category? And the winner is Naresh Janeja with Breathify. Naresh, if you can turn your video on, I will add you to the spotlight. Okay, give me just one second here. Okay, awesome. Let's, let's get in a virtual picture. Awesome, congratulations, Naresh, and thank you again, um, REI Oklahoma, Scott and Kelby, we really appreciate uh, all your support. Thank you very much, appreciate it. Thank you, Naresh. Okay, so now moving on to the revenue generating category. Our second place award is uh, presented by Ponotalk Technology Center. And uh, Jim Lawson, as I mentioned, uh, Jim has been such a supporter of entrepreneurship here locally, and we're so glad Ponotalk Technology Center is a sponsor. So Jim, if you can turn your video on, I will uh, add you to the spotlight. All right, Jim, I see you. Okay, whenever you're ready. All right. What a great year this year is for the presentation. It's really, really been a great group. Appreciate everybody's hard work uh, in all directions on the, on the projects. Pontotoc Technology Center is happy to be a sponsor, a sponsor for the second place for this award today. And of course, Pontotoc Technology Center is all about entrepreneurship. We support you in all ways from small business consulting to fab lab to instruction in technical areas. We're part of a 29 uh, school district, if you would call it that, a part of Oklahoma Career Tech. And we certainly appreciate everything that Ada Jobs is doing and that you're doing, Dia. And all of you, we wish you the very best of luck. Thank you, Jim, that's a great message. And if anybody did not notice, uh, Naresh's background, he was actually in the Fab Lab in PTC today. So definitely an example of how we are working so well in a community to support entrepreneurship. Okay, well, I will stop talking and uh, announce the winner for the second place in the revenue generating category. And that is Jamie Davis with Hidden Stars Theater. All right, Jamie, you're in the spotlight and congratulations. Thank you, Dia. That's exciting. Thank you, Thank Jamie. You. That was definitely one of the, it was, your pitch was fast and I, I, dramatic for <laughs> less better word, but that was, that was awesome. Really appreciate it. And thank you for Talk Technology Center for sponsoring this award. So we have uh, one last award left and that is the uh, winning prize for the revenue generating uh, category. And so far I have, I forgot to mention the cash prizes for these awards, but uh, the winner of the idea stage award received a $500 cash prize. The second place received $250 uh, and for revenue generating second place was $250 and for the first place is a thousand dollars. And with that, I would like to invite a Red Wise, the uh, Senior Vice President of Corporate Development at Legal Shield. And Red has also helped us uh, throughout the Startup Ada Bootcamp. And uh, Red, we really appreciate your support and Legal Shield support in making this happen. You bet. Thank you, Dia. I hope you all can hear me okay. Uh, Legal Shield has been a sponsor of Big Pitch Ada since its inception. So we are proud to sponsor its revenue generating first place award. At Legal Shield, we very much encourage entrepreneurships, development and growth in our community. I personally, as Dia mentioned, uh, have led one of the Startup Beta Bootcamp sessions each year and I've been a judge in the past and I've been an entrepreneur myself. This is very near and dear to my heart. 
Uh, and our company was created by a local entrepreneur, Harlan C. Stonecipher. He started prepaid legal services, now called Legal Shield, almost 50 years ago. Legal Shield congratulates the first place winner of the revenue generating award. And we also wish the winner and all other big pitch ADA presenters every success in your current and future business pursuits. This afternoon's mix of startups and pitches is really exciting. Thank you, Dia. Thank you, Red. Okay, so this is the last, last award for the evening and I am so excited to present the award for the first place at revenue generating category. And that is Lindsay Bonner with Expiration Ninja. Congratulations, Lindsay. All right. And Thank you. I will get you your award. Congratulations for winning the People's Choice Award and first place. Thank you so much. And thank you, Red, for that uh, wonderful speech. We really appreciate your support again. You bet. Okay, with that, we um, are at a wrap. I, I, I would like to invite uh, Jim Eldridge, CEO and President of Ada Jobs Foundation on the stage. Uh, but I also just wanted to quickly mention that um, we've had such great presentations this afternoon and I have worked uh, workshop with all of the participants and it just makes me really proud to see the presentations that you put up today. So with that, Jim, would you like to close that out, uh, close that out please? Sure, so again, thank you to everyone that made this happen and has been a part of this today. Um, you know, as we've been going through this year and going through all this weirdness and going through all the, um, you know, struggles and difficulties we face this year, um, we've noticed that ADA is recovering relatively well in the midst of the pandemic and economically our local economy has uh, had a lot of resilience and a lot of strength. And when we look at the companies that have been so strong and the companies that have been able to diversify our economy and the companies that have been able to maintain their payroll, a huge percentage of them were started by local entrepreneurs right here in ADA. So the work you do today is very important. The companies that are pitching are very important. Uh, the support organizations, the sponsors, all of you here in the community have made this so uh, important, not just for ADA, but for our region and for our state. So we, again, we thank you so much. Again, we know this is a very you know difficult and strange and trying year. Um, but we're getting through it really well, and we're so thrilled to be able to continue this on um, and be able to offer this to the community. So appreciate everyone for coming out, and Dia is going to fill you in on a little bit of things that we have coming up, um, and then we will send you off into the evening. Awesome. Thank you, Jim. Um, so again, I just want to say thank you to our judges, Tyler, Molly, and Kristen. That was, uh, we really appreciate your time and I look forward to sending your feedback back to the entrepreneurs and the finalists. Thank you for our participants for putting in the time and energy for presenting. And uh, of course, thank you to all our sponsors for uh, making all of this possible. So next week is Global Entrepreneurship Week and Ada is participating uh, officially as a part of Global Entrepreneurship Week for the first time. Uh, we have two events lined up and we hope to see you all at those events. We have a side hustle night happening uh, Monday uh, via Zoom at 5.30 p.m. We will be hearing from two local entrepreneurs who have a full-time job but are also doing a side business and talk about how do you balance you know, a side job and a full-time job and how do you keep that entrepreneurial spirit on. And then on Wednesday morning, we have the Community Entrepreneurship Hour, which we usually have every month on second Wednesday. But since it's Global Entrepreneurship Week, we are expanding beyond ADA and we have two awesome startups, one from the Denver area called Startup Space by Den uh, David Ponraj and Respond Flow from based out of Tulsa with uh, Matt. So please join us for these events. And again, thank you so much. Um, we hope to bring back the big pitch ADA again next year. And um, just follow us for any updates. Thank you all. Thank you, Dia, for all your work. Awesome job, Dia, Jim, everybody, and the entrepreneurs. Everyone was fantastic. Thank you, guys. <laughs>